Hey guys and gals. So today we are tackling something all new and I've gotten a little bit of a jump start on this project as you can see by the amount of sweat. Uh, I didn't want to make a video of some redundant tasks that there's plenty of videos out there already but today we're gonna start, I, I don't think I'm gonna finish it today but I'm, I'm starting the engine air filter for this car. Now that has been one of my uh, do-it-yourself tasks that I've been dreading to do, but I've been excited to do it at the same time, only because this isn't your typical engine air filter like you would find in the front hood compartment, engine compartment on a vehicle where you just pop off a plastic cover and just change out the engine air filter. Thanks to the lovely engineers at Porsche, they really made this super complicated. And I've seen some pretty nice do-it-yourself uh, photographic uh, uh, posts on Renlist and other places and it it's a little intimidating because there's this whole like spaghetti mash of cables or hoses or wires I I don't I'm not even sure exactly what I'm gonna get into but I have to remove the bumper to get to the air filter and it's it's I'm a little nervous about it but not too nervous because the people that have done it say it's fairly simple now if you go to do this at the dealership they're gonna charge you four or five hundred bucks if you do it yourself you pay the cost of the filter, which is less than a hundred bucks and, and you have fun doing it. And truthfully, I'm actually very excited about doing this, even though I'm a little nervous. Um, so I brought the car in and it, you know, obviously the engine was hot. It's just South Florida. I'm already sweating because I, I'm just getting started here. I've uh, put some masking on the edges of the bumper there. I've got the car jacked up, wheels off so I can have easy access to the uh, screws got my tools ready. I've got the uh, cordless uh, ratchet. I've got the Torx bits. I've got a T25 and a T27. I also am going to be doing one other thing. Let me go get it. Got these really nice exhaust tips off of eBay. Actually, I found an eBay seller uh, in China who custom made these tips for me and he made them to my specification length diameter etc they're pretty nice uh, carbon fiber they seem very well made they took me a, almost a month to get and the reason I got these is I wanted to change my chrome uh, factory tips to black I was gonna have them ceramic coated in black to go with the new uh, black trim piece theme that I'm trying to go with for this vehicle and I didn't want to be without tips while I sent those tips out. So I wanted to get an inexpensive pair. These were less than a hundred bucks. Uh, it's a great deal considering if you want to buy some black tips or any tips from Soul, FabSpeed, TechArt or, or Porsche, you're going to spend no less than $500 and as much as eight or 900 just for some tips. And to me, this is primarily just an aesthetic piece. I, I know that they do have a function as well. Uh, but these seem really well made. They are carbon fiber and um, I'm looking forward to seeing what they look like when they're on. It, I may like these so much that I may not even get those chrome tips um, painted in black. I might just leave them and save them in case I ever want to go back to chrome. So we'll see. So anyways, um, I also had to get these uh, star sockets. That's for the muffler tips because it turns out every part on this car needs a different tool. Um, and so you need star sockets to take off the muffler tips. You need uh, the uh, Torx bits to take off the bumper and you need different sizes. And so I'm just gonna get into um, a little bit of, of what you're gonna have to remove to, to get this started. I don't wanna spend too much time detailing the, the, the prep work. I, wa I wanna focus a little bit more on once I get the bumper off, but I'm gonna show you a little bit of stuff here so you can see what you're getting into um, in order to remove the bumper and get this going. So hang on for a moment, stay tuned, and we'll be right back. So again, to get things started, I removed the wheels because I wanted to have easy access to all the screws I was gonna have to remove. And I thought there was gonna be three or four of these Torx screws that I was gonna have to remove, but I'm only finding two uh, under here. There's one right there and another one right there. These are T25s, and then underneath the vehicle, there are there are seven of the T27s. There's one there, one there, that's two, 
Um, oh, there's a third one right there. Three, four, four is right there. And then there's three more. So there's seven in total of these T27s underneath. Plus the four, two on each side in the, the rear uh, wheel well. And then you got a couple up here. These are T25s also. Um, and I had to remove those plastic cover caps there uh, from, from over here. You do have to remove these reservoir caps to get those off on this side. On the other side, it just pops off nice and easy. And then there's a few more screws in here. Um, I'm not sure if those are 25s or 27s. I think those might be 27s. There's probably about four. So in total, we've got four, eight, looks like 12 plus seven. Looks like about 19 screws that need to be removed just to get the bumper off. So anyways, that's where we're at. Um, I am going to show a little bit more once I start getting into this. So stay tuned. Okay, I've got the all the screws out i removed the tail lights which kind of slid out nice and easy there are two screws left these are uh, one on this side and one in the same spot on the other side those are also t27s i believe once those two screws are removed this bumper should slide right off so um stay tuned All right, so I just took this part off of here and I'm gonna remove the other one so you could see it. It's fairly simple. You just have to kind of wiggle it out of place a little bit, but this pulls out fairly easy from here. And then you have to lift up just enough to get that out. And then this 
just slides right out. I'm probably gonna take some like silicon spray, what you would use for like to protect door seals and stuff like that and, and clean this up nice before putting it back on. But you can see these two pieces pop right off. And I'm gonna put them off to the side and this is to be continued. All right, so before I go any further, uh, I'm gonna get some good video here and I'm also gonna stop and take some photographs because this is the part that intimidates me the most is this right here. This whole spaghetti mash of things I don't know what they are, what they're for. I have no idea. I'm just just a guy trying to change an air filter. So um, I'm gonna just get some good video. I'm gonna take a bunch of photographs just to make sure that if I undo anything, I can redo it again. But you can see there are some things that are gonna have to be removed in order to get to that air filter. And uh, that's interesting, there's a leaf in there. I might try to clean that out a little bit. I might take a brush or a rag to some of this stuff and just clean it out. But uh, anyways, this is what we've got. All right, I have to give mad props to my Renlist friend, Polabi. We'll just use screen names, even though uh, he and I have become friendly and he uh, accepted a FaceTime call for me to help walk me through a few more steps. So it turns out um, I wasn't aware we have to remove the spoiler to get to the Y pipes. And it's a little bit more involved, but not too complicated. You remove the uh, the fans and the air box the way you would to do an oil change. Um, we have to disconnect that uh, connector there. And then there's four larger Torx screws. There's one there. There's another one right in there in the middle. And then there's two more on the other side. We gotta lift this spoiler up and out to get to those Y pipes. So just wanted to show you that. Uh, he also walked me through what I'm gonna to have to do here, we'll be disconnecting over here uh, right before, the, that's the Y pipe goes down into the intercooler. We'll be disconnecting there and we'll be disconnecting on the other side as well, lifting everything up and hopefully it will start to get like a little easier. But anyways, stay tuned, more to come and Thank you, Polabi. All right, spoiler is removed. That was uh, a little tricky, um, not too complicated. I had to remove this little 10 millimeter bolt there in order to separate this part here, which is where you fill the oil, the oil reservoir. You can see where the oil goes down into the engine. And I had to disconnect that plug, which I snapped the little plastic connector thing and broke it. And well, I don't expect that to get fixed because it's, it's, uh, it's this part right there. And well, it's not going to get fixed. So it's just going to have to sit there nicely, but Overall, not too bad. This is definitely a little bit more than what I was expecting, but not too complicated. Not too, too complicated. Anyways, we are gonna be taking off these Y pipes and well, we'll see how it goes. All right, uh, I finally got this Y pipe removed, but I will tell you 
that getting this thing off was probably one of the scariest parts of this job. Um, it involved <laughs> loosening these clamps. These things were on so tight, so tight onto this thing. Uh, I almost didn't think I was gonna be able to get them off. And had to do the same thing over here. Incredibly tight. There's a bunch of things that you have to disconnect here. You have to disconnect this thing from that, this thing from that. There's all, you know, th this thing connects. I put a piece of tape on there, connects to something else. There's just things connecting to things and we're almost there. But uh, I can now say that I got the white pipe off. I'm going to set it down whoa set it down somewhere carefully and now we can kind of just look here at this beautiful mess and i gotta tell you i have been thinking a lot about whether or not i would do this again um it's definitely been a little nerve-wracking but i guess it's normal to feel this way when you're taking on something like this that you've never done. Maybe after I'm done, I'll think like it wasn't such a big deal. But this so far has been pretty intense for me. So, to be continued. Okay, I finally got this piece off. It takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven screws, some jiggling because these little tabs on the back go into those little holes right there he, he, it's it's complicated but you could do it this is was not as difficult as getting that y pipe out for sure uh, but we got it out and there's the beautiful not too dirty filter but we're here we're going to change it because it's at the four-year mark so here we are Interesting to look in here. I'm gonna wipe things down and maybe get some better video and photos of that. And for those of you that wanna see a clean, brand new filter next to a 8,500 mile, four year old filter, there you go. Probably could have gone a little longer on this other filter, but we're gonna have a brand new one and we won't be doing this again for another four years or 10,000 miles. All right, here comes the money shot. We're gonna look down in here. I'm ready to pull this one out. I already loosened the connection. There's this little thing that has to come off of here. So make sure you disconnect that. And then I think, am I missing something? Oh, there is indeed something down here. Interesting. Let's see. This. All right. All right. Come on down here with the camera. You see there's this thing here. That right there. That needs to come off. And so, there we go. That comes off. This whole thing, I think, is ready to pop out. Yes, it is. Ta-da! Four-year-old filter, 8,500 miles. Now it's time to put the new one back in. I'm going to start. By the way, I have my lovely assistant, Vanna, <laughs> filming. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to start by getting those that one connector in first the tricky one and that goes right there just like the last one and then you know you got to make sure you don't you get these all in in the right order this thing comes back here 
let's see. Yeah, that looks good. This goes in. This should kind of snap in a little bit. All right, so what I'm gonna do, rather than have my assistant filming me struggling with this, I'm gonna come back and show it to you when it's done. Good morning. So, I wrapped this up last night. I finished off uh, at the point where I secured these clamps here. Uh, these metal clamps that go onto the ends of the air filter. And uh, I had to just kind of put it down for the night. I would spent about three hours on it. Uh, it was getting pretty late. And most of the time um, it was spent on, a, on just a few little parts. Uh, overall, if you would have asked me yesterday about midway through this, if I would do it again, I, I don't know that I, I would have said yes. I think the things that that made it challenging for me were the things that caught me off guard. So um, to all of you guys out there that have done these videos and posted tutorials on changing the air filters on the 991.1, it made it look so easy. Um, thanks for nothing because the 991.2 is definitely uh, not as easy as changing on a 991.1. So for all you people out there with a 991.2 Carrera, get ready because this is hopefully going to be a video that helps you. So the things that made it more difficult for me were the things that caught me by surprise. There was the, number one, there was the additional screws uh, behind the wheel well. That took me just a little bit to figure out, but yeah, I couldn't figure out why the bumper wouldn't come off. There was actually two additional screws back there. Um, then there was the additional wiring harnesses that were attached uh, behind the bumper, which is fine. Uh, just, you know, that took an, an extra five, 10 minutes to figure out how to get in there and, and disconnect them. Um, you know, sometimes these wiring harnesses are, are a little tricky to, to separate. And I, I actually did break one, um, one of the clips that attaches the harness to, to the body. So, you know, th th that's the type of thing that happens with these things with me. That's why I really dread messing with wiring harnesses. But, so that caught me by surprise. Um, then when I found out I had to remove the spoiler, um, that caught me by surprise. And once again, big thanks to Polabi. You are the man, you helped me so much on this. So thank you, much appreciated. Um, but yeah, so the spoiler had to come out. And for the spoiler to come out, more parts had to come off. Um, and then I get to the, the T pipe or the Y pipe. And that too was, that was probably like the trickiest part. And I honestly, I, if I hadn't had a chance to speak to Polabi last night while I was working on this and have him walk me through a few of these steps, including removing the spoiler and how to get the Y pipe off. I, I don't think I would have been able to complete this. It was not straightforward at all. Removing the Y pipe from these parts right here and, and from here, it, that was tricky. That was really tricky. Um, it, it was on really tight here and not just the metal clamp that was on, but even after you loosen the metal clamp, it was very tight. I had to use a, a small flat head screwdriver to kind of pry the, the, the tubing off. Um, so anyways, royal pain in the you know what, but, um, and then of course, you know, I still have to figure out how all this stuff goes back on. Um, uh, and I have lots of pictures and videos, so I, I will be referring to that as needed. But anyways, so there you have it. So that was the job. I, I would say probably took me, um, when, when I'm done, well, you know what? I, I'm gonna wait till I'm done before I say how long it took me because 
I still have to get all this back together. And I'm hoping that I can get it back together much easier than it was to take apart. So fingers crossed on that. I might do this in time lapse. Um, so, um, and then maybe add any commentary if, if I feel there's a need to um, expand on anything. Um, oh, and I need to still put on those muffler tips. Anyways, I uh, hope to be back talking to you once again as we wrap this up. So hope you're enjoying so far. All right, just thought I'd show this uh, stock exhaust tip up close a little bit. Uh, it takes an E22 star socket to get that off. Uh, came off real easy. Just get under the car, loosen it, slides right off. And here we have the new one. I haven't gotten it fully tightened down, but I was just wanting to have it be on for comparison's sake. Uh, I wiped down the chrome one just to give it the optimal look. Of course, the chrome does indeed look very nice. But uh, anyway, so um, what I did here was I measured, uh, and I looks like it's about five and a half, uh, five and five eighths inches. And so I wanted it to come out just a little bit more. So I'm at about six and a quarter. Um, so you, you may also notice that I pulled the air filter back out before I put everything back together again because I wanted to just wipe everything down really nice. Uh, used some of this stuff on all of the plastics um, just to kind of give it a little extra protection, particularly around areas like this. Uh, and just to make it look nice, clean, I went in and actually vacuumed out some some debris that was in there and uh, that's it. Alrighty, to be continued. All right, got both tips on, and I'm a little bit of a perfectionist about certain things, and one of the things that I'm noticing is is the, the angle, the cut angle, and I think it has more to do with how the, uh, the, the tips were attached, and maybe if I loosen it and, and kind of reposition it a, li a little bit, might be able to to have them look a little bit more even but from a, a length perspective I, I measured them out they are correct um, so we're just gonna have to uh, play around with that a little bit but I did put the filter back on um, vacuumed out in there did some other wiping down of things and should be getting things back together shortly All right, well, I'm still working on this. Uh, I just wanted to take a little extra time to wipe down as much of the uh, plastic surfaces as well as the metal surfaces. I used some of that Worth silicon spray and um, I used some quick detailer on the painted surfaces. I'm gonna use this stuff here that I got off of Amazon. It's a uh, silicon lubricating grease. I'm just gonna use just a very light dab of that on some of the plastic grommets and stuff like that, just to keep things from hopefully uh, drying out or breaking it in the future when I go to remove pieces. Um, so far, as I mentioned previously, only one uh, plastic connector broken so far, and hopefully none more before I'm done. So stay tuned. Alrighty, so this is just going to be a quick review of the tools that I used for this job. 
Now, I always find that whenever I'm doing any kind of work on my car, I go into it thinking I'm only going to need certain tools. And then by the end of the job, I find that I've pulled out a lot of other tools. So this is kind of just to show you what I ended up using throughout this job. I left all my tools out so that way I can kind of do a little inventory of that for future reference. Now, some of these tools are not in fact needed, but they may be needed if you want to do certain things like jack up your vehicle or um, do, for instance, the exhaust uh, tips removal and replacement. So keep that in mind that some of these tools are indeed optional. So to begin with, um, you want to have some uh, additional supplementary lighting to help you see into the areas of the engine compartment that might not be too easy. In addition to those, I had a flashlight. I'll be honest, I got these from Costco. I'm not really happy with them. I need to get something that's better for working on, on this vehicle. I have one of those creeper seats, um, some race ramps that I use to get the car up on to the uh, jack stands because I can't actually get the the uh, this thing underneath the car unless I have the the wheels up a few inches. So I have the jack point jack stands you see there, the creeper seat, the race ramps. I uh, have some wheel chocks, uh, bunches of rags. I use one rag for um, just you know general cleaning of surfaces. I used one for some you know, applying a quick detailer. Another one for applying some, some um, you know, care for the uh, rubber trim pieces, the black pieces, and, uh, and I'll get to that in a second. And of course, a, a creeper pad for getting underneath. I will say that if I were to do this again, I would definitely put the car up on the jack stands, primarily because it raises the back end up uh, about, you know, about a foot, which makes it easier to uh, just get into the things both underneath in the case of uh, removing the bumper uh, and the exhaust tips and as well it just puts things closer to eye level although not at eye level so here are the the smaller tools um, we had the as i previously showed the star sockets some torx bits you'll see that uh, there's a few different ones that are needed uh, you'll need a, a, a 10 millimeter socket to remove uh, a bracket that holds the uh, oil reservoir cap uh, trim piece. Um, I have uh, electric uh, 3 8 and uh, 1 8 inch socket wrench uh, ratchets, uh, both manual and electric. You don't need both if you have the right adapters where you can kind of move between different size pieces, but if you have both, great. Um, I, I referred to this in the video as a silicon spray, but it's actually silicon free spray and it's intended for um, those rubber and plastic areas that helps preserve them. Uh, I used just a little bit of WD-40 on some screws that um, you know, I, I felt were maybe a little bit oxidized and I just wanted to kind of uh, clean them up a little bit so they'd go in a little bit easier. Nothing that required torque specification. Uh, had some quick detailer here. This is actually um, uh, ONR, but I put it in this bottle um, and I took off the Meguiar's label so that uh, it only says quick detailer on it. Used a crescent wrench to uh, loosen one of the clamps or two clamps. Uh, thankfully, uh, this is a tip that I got from uh, one of my uh, Renless friends who you will hear about in the video. A couple of flathead screwdrivers that I use to um, uh, you know, tighten some of the clamps and as well uh, it helped to remove uh, one of or two of the hoses. Um, this is a guide rod that I use for uh, removing and replacing, I'm sorry, replacing the wheels, um, a plastic trim piece uh, popper offer, uh, brass bristle brush to just um, scrub the, uh, the face of the wheels when you remove the, the rims just to get some of that um, oxidation off the, uh, 
off the, the front of the, the wheels, not the wheels, but the, I don't even know what you call it, but when you take off the wheels where the wheel sits. Uh, use some gloves, masking tape for the body panels. Um, these are the uh, sockets for the wheels, uh, a breaker bar, torque wrench to get the wheels back on. And then uh, you need, well, I needed the star bit for the muffler tips. You don't need that for any other part of the job. And I had a ruler there to help uh, measure. So I didn't end up using any of this uh, silicon lubricating grease, um, probably because I just didn't see there was uh, any place in particular that I needed it, but I decided to have it just in case, but I didn't end up needing it. So, so there you have it. Those are uh, all the tools that I ended up using. Again, you won't need all of them. Some of them will be handy if you want to uh, raise the car up and remove the wheels. Otherwise, uh, you'll probably just use mostly the uh, smaller hand tools. Hey everyone, it's done. Finally, it's done. This is day three. And the reason it's day three is just because I, I really didn't have time to work on this for an extensive period of time on any single day. So I really had to just break this up over a few days. I would say if you're a novice do-it-yourselfer like me, and I would say I'm very novice, uh, I, this is a, a full day task. Even though there's plenty of people out there that, that have done it in just a few hours, I think if you take it to the dealership, they knock it out in just a few hours, maybe two, three hours. Uh, it would have definitely taken me a full 12 hour day to get this done just because of the variety of of challenges and unexpected surprises that I encountered. And I and I covered off on some of those and, and I just, you know, want to caution you about that is, you know, be very careful and meticulous about, um, you know, saving your parts, knowing where they belong, knowing what screws go where, uh, knowing the order in which you do things, because there are some things that you'll find that if you try to do them out of order, you will be removing stuff after putting it back on like I did. Yesterday, I actually forgot to do a couple of things after doing the next step, and I ended up having to remove the spoiler again um, there was, you know, I had forgotten to tighten down a couple of hose clamps, which could have led to a catastrophic failure if I, if I didn't actually remember that. And that was actually something that would have been very easy to forget. So, um, I would say that, you know, for a novice do it yourself, this was, this was really, this was the hardest thing I've ever done working on a car. Granted, I haven't really done very much beyond uh, brakes and oil changes, um, you know, that, that's, that's probably like the typical degree of mechanical skill that I have. Um, this was, this was a whole nother level. And if you need to be, if this is your only, if you're, if you're working on this car and you need this car for transportation, it's your only vehicle for transportation. Um, and you're a novice like me, uh, I would just say be very careful because you may you may run into having to work on this over uh, beyond one day and you may be without a functioning vehicle. So um, that's just something to think about. Again, I'm sure there's gonna be some people watching this video that will laugh at how long it took me to, took, uh, to do all this, but that's me and, and I think that for a lot of people out there, uh, it's probably uh, gonna be the same. So. It's done. I'm super happy I got to do this. And uh, I really hope that this video benefits uh, some of you out there, particularly those that have a 991.2, uh, because that is indeed a different animal in terms of replacing these air filters than the 991.1, as, as you saw in some of those details and removing the, uh, the parts in there and all those vacuum lines and hoses. So just be prepared for that. Um, and I guess that's it. The, uh, I, I would say if you have any questions or comments, please be sure to, to post them in the comment section. Um, I may add some information in the description later. I haven't really been doing much of that lately, but I, I should. And, um, and that's about it. I, I hope you really enjoyed this. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what else you'd like to see. And uh, 
I forgot to talk about the um, the exhaust tips. Uh, that was fairly easy to do. Um, there was, you know, quite a bit of adjusting that I needed to get them centered and aligned perfectly. But 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 it was fairly easy to do. Oh, the other thing I well no, I think I already said it somewhere else, so I'm not going to repeat it. But anyways, that's it. I think I'm really done this time. And if I'm not, you're going to see another video after this if I forgot to tell you something. So. Take care, everyone. Uh, looking forward to making the next video. I don't know what it will be, but when I do, you'll see it. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Have a great one, everyone. Well, I said I might be adding another video, and sure enough, here it is. I know that there's going to be some people that are going to want to see some uh, close-ups of these exhaust tips. I think they came out really nice. They look nice on the car. They're achieving the desired effect that I wanted, which was to have some uh, matte black exhaust tips. I'm going to keep them on for a while and see if they grow on me before I decide to have my original ones painted black. But uh, that's them. And if you want to see, they, they have a they're pretty big diameter, about four and a half inches. They look good. Alrighty. Hope you enjoyed that.